Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about the importance of performing a market feasibility study. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video today is because, you know, this is an important first step for any new entrepreneur about to embark on a, on a, on, on a new business or even an established business trying to penetrate a new market, okay? And the reason why it's so important is because it really doesn't matter how strong your business plan is, okay? Um, you could have the best business plan. You could, you could have uh, an excellent value proposition. You could have a fantastic product uh, with a lot of growth potential, with a lot of profit uh, and low cost. You could have everything outlined in your business plan. But if you're entering a market that's on a decline, and if you're entering a market that is not healthy and is not able to accept a new player, then it really doesn't matter how strong your, your business plan is. Okay? So you've got to do a market feasibility study, and I can't stress that enough. Um, the thing is nowadays is that, you know, entrepreneurs and people that are aspiring to become, you know, business owners, you know, there's so much stuff out there about being positive and about thinking positively and not thinking to any of the naysayers. And it's not that I'm trying to say that you, you know, you should, you, you should think negatively. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, do your due diligence, do your research, then do your business plan. And then when everything is lined up and everything, all your checks and balances are done and everything makes sense, then start thinking positively, okay? So just do your homework beforehand. So there's three things I want to talk about when it comes to market feasibility studies. I want to talk about market conditions, like the current market's health. I want to talk about operational requirements. And I want to talk about the demand in the market. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is market conditions. Now we're talking about the current market conditions. Okay, so we're going to go market conditions and then I'll put slash health, okay? What you're trying to do in this case is you're trying to define whether or not the market is in a growth stage or in a decline stage, okay? So is it, is it uh, growth or decline, okay? What is the 5, 10, 15, and even 25-year forecast for your market in terms of growth. Now, look, obviously, you know, the longer the forecast, the less accurate that forecast is. So, I mean, you know, maybe the 25 year thing is not as much of a concern, but you gotta know the five and 10 year forecast for that market. You really need to understand, is the market healthy? Is it growing? And does it make sense to enter that market, okay? One of the things you gotta consider when it comes to market conditions, this will be the first one, is you got to think about competing technologies. Now, I actually uh, worked for a company a couple of years ago where we provided um, raw materials to companies uh, in the optical media industry, you know, CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray discs. And, you know, obviously that market declined and it's at the point where it will be, you know, uh, non-existent in maybe a decade or so. But what was surprising to me was that when I was working at this company, I, I can't tell you how many times I had people calling up that were just starting their business right at the point where the market was on a decline. Now they had a business plan, they went to uh, private investors, they got uh, you know, funding and everything else, maybe they went to a bank, and they had a solid business plan, but the market was on a decline. Okay? <laughs> so you really got to understand what are the competing technologies. There may be a competing technology out there that's going to you know, just completely wipe you off the face of the earth in terms of your new product offering. Okay? You also got to be concerned with who are the dominant players, okay? Who owns the market? And how strong are these guys? What are they going to do when you show up? What are they going to do to keep you out of the market? Are they going to make it more difficult for you to become a player in the market, okay? And then strengths and weaknesses of these dominant players. Okay, so what can they use to their advantage to make it more difficult for you to get your new venture off the ground? Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing was we're looking at operational requirements. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, operational aspects within your business plan. I'm talking more about um, how you're going to set up your supply chain within the industry that you're going into or the market you're going into, whether or not it's going to be easy to, you know, secure the raw materials and parts that you're going to need, okay? So operational requirements. Is it going to be easy to secure raw materials 
in part. You know, where are your vendors going to be? Overseas only? Is there a current backlog on raw materials that's going to make it virtually impossible to get your hands on anything without having to pay an astrono astronomical sum to get those, those, those things into your warehouse? What are you going to do with that? Okay. The other thing you've got to be concerned about is you know, the, the options that are included on machinery, equipment, and everyday capital expenditures. Capital expenditures, okay? Now, one of the things that happens in some industries, and I've seen this firsthand, is that you've got some dominant market players who've got some very strong vendor relationships with machinery and equipment manufacturers, and they pretty much dictate the market. I mean, they basically have got contracts out for years in advance, and the equipment manufacturers are all book solid. You know, you got to be you got to be aware of what that means for you. You try to enter a market, you try to get yourself, a, a, you know, try to make a capital expenditure on a piece of equipment, and you find out that the equipment manufacturers, the OEMs, are book solid for the next three or four years, and if you want to get it, you got to pay a sur you know a surcharge or whatever. That can kill you. Okay, financing options. How are you going to finance these capital expenditures? What, what is the standard norm or acceptable practice inside of the market that you're going after? Okay? How are you going to finance that? You've got to understand that because that, that can sink you as well. Okay? The other thing you want to understand is supplier terms. Okay? Is this going to be prepayment? Okay? And um, you know, customer terms in terms of payment. There's nothing worse, um, receivables, there's nothing worse than having a lag between your payables and your receivables. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that have got a great, pro great product and service, but they, everything, everything falls apart all because of cash flow. Okay? So you've got you to consider those things. Okay? Now the third thing you're going to look at is market demand. Okay? In order for your business plan to work, there's got to be some way that you can distinguish your product offering in the market. Okay? So you got to focus on distinguishing product offering. Okay? Essentially, when you've defined the health of the market and it's a growing market and you understand the dominant market players, the, guy, the, the companies out there, what they can use to keep someone like you at bay, and you've covered all your operational requirements and it makes sense to enter this market, um, then you really want to make sure that what you have to offer is a value proposition that your customers are going to gravitate to. Okay? And that might include things like pricing, uh, payment terms, um, what have you. But you've got to bas be, basically be able to say, is this market receptive to new business? Okay? So final, the final point is receptive to new business. Is the market, are customers receptive? And I'll put customers in parentheses. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here today is that, you know, a business plan is important. You've got to have a good business plan. But before you do that business plan, before you put it together, do a market feasibility study. And in some cases, you won't be able to do it yourself. You may have to buy one. But it's the essential first step because, again, it doesn't matter how good your business plan is. If the market's on a steady decline, it doesn't matter what you're offering. It's not going to work. So that's it. Market feasibility studies. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.